Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. Sorry about that. I was having some problems with the uh, live stream. Uh, apparently YouTube changed a few things around, so I think we got it going. Uh, if somebody can, let me get an audio check. Just make sure that uh, you can hear me properly and uh, we'll start drawing some stuff. And obviously chime in and let me know what you guys would like to see drawn today. Until then, I'll just start warming up. Let me move my uh, screen around here so I can see the chat window. For just about the time you get used to all this stuff, somebody changes something. You gotta start all over. Okay. All right, can anybody hear me? Say something. It's crispy clear, nice. Thanks, Tweetish. Tweetish. Twist, twista, sorry. Still early for me. Still waking up here. All right, so um, quick question. What would you guys like to see drawn? I'm just going to scribble here for a minute. I'm trying to uh, fit in character designs and expressions as much as possible. So kind of what I'm going to jump to. Warm up that expression. Yeah, so you guys, uh, hello, hello, hello. You guys chime in and let me know what you want to see drawn. And uh, we will go from there. Yeah, this new uh, new uh, live stream window is quite, quite different. It's going to take some getting used to. Thanos. Yeah, that'd be a cool one. Avengers Endgame. Yeah, everybody's excited for that. I didn't even think about that. That's probably a good one. Yeah, I could draw like a headshot or upper torso of Thanos. So we got one for Avengers Endgame, one for Thanos, one for Batman, one for Black Panther and Spider-Man teaming up. Okay, I don't know about any team ups. That's gonna be, we could pick one or other of those characters. Um, Spider Sona? No, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, and before we get started too, I want to make sure to mention um, that. Uh, you do expressions. Yeah, so our, we're all over the place right now. So you guys go ahead and you, know, you see what's there commented or, or already. Uh, I need some secondary nominations and thirds and you know that way we can pick one of these. Until you guys kind of figure that out, I'm just gonna keep scribbling this expression here. A little warm up. All right, two for Spider-Man, two for Spider-Sona, which I don't even know who that is. Man, I must be out of the loop. Uh, another one for faces, it looks like. Again, extending the jaw. Ooh, lots of great, lots of great suggestions here. Oh, you basically draw your version if you were Spider-Man. Ah, Spider-Sona, gotcha. There's a lot of Spidey suggestions, but they're all over the place, like different Spideys. Red Hood, Sad Spider-Man. Goodness, everybody, everybody likes Spidey. I mean, I guess we could go for Spider-Man if that's what you guys want to do. Oh, thanks, uh, LVO. I appreciate the support. Am I talking about getting one of the courses? Yeah. Um, can't see Spidey's face. Uh, so basically, let's... Uh, 
let's go ahead and pick something. So we can do we can do Spider Man or Thanos. Let's do that. So I'm giving you guys the options now. Um, so here we go: Spider Man or Thanos. You guys start chiming in. In the next uh, two minutes, the most votes for one of those two characters. That's who we'll draw. Go. No, no, not the thing. Spider Man or Thanos. We're down to those two. Uh, so, so you guys pick. Go. Should have set a timer. It's probably going to be Spidey. That's like got to be the most famous character out there, right? Just figured you guys might want to see Thanos because of the end game. So let's see. We got one for Spidey, one for Thanos, two for Thanos, two for Spidey. We're missing. And I guess really a third spider thanos mashup come on people spidey 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 entering thanos no i'm not reading that good try good try real hit okay so yeah let's just go spidey is that what we're coming up with a few more seconds for you guys to chime in spider nose <laughs> yeah spider-man with thanos's glove Oh my God, two for spider Nose and spider Mouse. You guys are on the same page. Oh, and then bam, three consecutive for Thanos. Yes. What is that? I'm losing count now. Draw on Procreate. I'm not switching the app. Sorry, I already got this set up. It just, let's just throw it all in the garbage and start over. How about that? All right, so anyways, let's do, let's do Thanos. Um, it looks pretty evenly matched. Maybe, maybe I'll try to do a little Spidey swinging in the background or something. I'm kind of feeling like more of a Thanos day. So I'm kind of feeling like the Mad Titan. And I'll let you know why here in a little bit. I got a little bit of bad news, folks. But I'm not going to bring down the live stream by, you know, being all depressed and mad. But I do want to share a little bit of bad information. Just so that, you know, you guys that are supporters will know how to uh, handle it. So... Let me jump right in it because I don't want to leave you hanging on a cliff here. So basically, um, yeah, this this will line up with Endgame. So let's do that. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, as you guys may or may not know, um, I'm the author, illustrator of the book, Learn to Draw Action Heroes. And I recently got uh, some information that the company, the mother company that uh, helps publish and distribute that title uh, is filing bankruptcy. And it's uh, F and W Media. If you haven't heard the the news on that or whatever, they're a big publishing house and media house. They control all these other titles. Now, the thing is, there, the smoke hasn't cleared as to what's going to really happen there. I know a bunch of people like myself, authors and probably employees and who knows whatever else, are getting kind of duped by this whole process that they do. Um, you know, which means loss of income, whatever. You know, different things will happen, but. The main reason I wanted to share it with you guys is not to say poor, poor me, because I learned immensely through doing that book and I was still very, very excited about the book being out there. And I'm trying to get my hands on as many copies as I can to have with me when I go to comic shows and things like that. But I want you to know that way, if you do want a copy, maybe get it sooner rather than later uh, on Amazon or something like that or wherever it's at Hobby Lobby, Barnes and Noble, places like that, because I don't know what is going to happen through this process it's potentially going to happen where another company will just buy it out and keep publishing the book which would be great um but i'm not i'm not counting on that that's kind of what they told me to make me feel better i think and it's like i'm not counting on it because so far they've been pretty uh inaccurate in what they've told me and like uh very unprofessional in a lot of ways so Unfortunately, going into it, they were very, they seemed very reliable, very professional. And I had already had a bunch of their books on my shelf because I'm a big fan of learn to draw books myself, right? So I already had a bunch of books by Impact. So when they asked me to do a book, I was all about it. But uh, like I said, after, you know, going through this experience, it kind of got worse and worse. So, and now they're filing bankruptcy. So so just be aware of that. I made sure there's a link in the description box below for my Amazon affiliate link if you guys want it. Um, 
But yeah, I just wanted to keep you in the loop because you guys have been so supportive. Just so you know, the whole reason I got offered to do that book was because of you guys and the support on the channel. They found me through YouTube and saw what we had here as far as the how to draw videos and all the feedback and the, you know, the, um, the relationships that we have basically by doing this channel. Uh, so that's what led to that book deal. So in a lot of ways, I owe all this to you guys. So not, not the bad part though, just the good stuff. <laughs> um, but I learned through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plan to do another book, but I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to self publish. I'll share all that with you guys. Maybe we'll do a Kickstarter, GoFundMe, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just make it, put it out there on Gumroad and digital means like Amazon, Kindle, and things like that. And uh, people can support it if they want. But I won't be subject to another company, you know, axing the, the project or, you know, them losing, uh, you know, going through bankruptcy or whatever. Just crazy. You know, and then it kind of made me more upset. We're like, well, they, they might just... I might just file this and then we'll come back out on top and things will keep going as normal. I'm like, oh, so you get to just wash your debt to a bunch of people <laughs> and then start over. No, that's, that kind of makes me more ticked off. Not, it didn't make me happy, you know. It's like, it's funny, like the things they try to say to make you feel better about it. Or maybe I just don't understand it all. I don't know. Anyways, enough of that negativity. Back to Thanos here. But yeah, so that's kind of why I thought drawing the Mad Titan might be better, you know. Oh, if I had the Infinity Glove right now. Oh, boy. No. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the snap. So, who's all excited for Endgame, and what do you think is going to happen? Do you think, you think Hulk's going to come out and smash his face, or is that just, is he not going to be a big, I don't know. That's one of my questions for the movie anyways. I want to know what's going to happen to Hulk. I'm a big Hulk fan, I guess. Yeah, th thanks, David, for that nice uh, message. I appreciate that. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all the um, the cool comments, you know, and that. Yeah, it does suck to hear, but, you know, you learn from everything. You grow and get better from everything, every experience. So I could sit here and go, oh, pity party for me, or I could just try to grow from it and become a better artist and you know I learned a lot from it and I, and I hate to say it there's there's a big part of what we're doing here that's kind of having that effect like you know look at what we're doing right here right now interacting with you know there's like 35 viewers on here it seems to be going up which is great there's a 40 now there's a bunch of viewers on here right you're getting to interactively work through this project with me I mean it's having its toll on print media. I mean, I don't think, I'm not one of those guys that likes to say, hey, print print is dead. I don't believe that. I don't want to believe that. Uh, but at the same time, there's just such a huge potential and a power and a, and a recourse or a whiplash of what's going on right here. Um, all right, keep in mind too, we got a warning. The stream's current bit rate is lower than the recommended bit rate. Man, we had a great bitrate a little while ago. Uh, by the way, I have no clue what bitrate is. No, but it, it's, you know, the stream health or whatever. Just be be uh, aware of that. Hopefully that goes back up. Man, normally I have a really good connection here. Unfortunate. Is that on the wrong side? It's the left glove, isn't it? All right, let me fix this real quick. There we go. Sorry about that. I flip the artwork anyways back and forth, so doesn't really hurt on you know to have it on one side or the other yeah so you know with all this stuff going digital and being so interactive and so powerful even like those online courses that I create but may, you know mainly like things like YouTube it's like it gives you the power of building an audience but at the same time it's hard to really get people to say run out and buy books as much I think and I think it's having an effect on these big companies that their numbers have to be really declining and, and really taking a hit. It's just, you know, the future is now, and there's going to be a lot of repercussions to all these cool things that we're experiencing. <laughs> the actual person to end Thanos would be Ronan Hawkeye. That's a good possibility. 
Yeah, Gauntlet is in the left hand. Okay. Loki ain't dead. Yeah, I don't think he is either. He's faked his death so many times. He's the, the Machiavelli of uh, the Marvel Universe. Okay, so I got to remember the designs for Thanos. I really need some reference. I'm going to go like this. Like that. Got this neck piece, I think. Got the funky chin. Nothing beats when uh, Quill called him out on his funky chin. <laughs> that was awesome. He say something like, I'm going to blow that nut sack of a chin off your face. I <laughs> uh, really cannot wait for Endgame. Avengers uh, Infinity War was just one of my favorite movies probably all time. I, I have to say all the Marvel movies have just been fantastic. But that one really just had a presence about it. I think it's going to be really hard to top uh, for this next one. That's kind of what I'm... I'm fearful of is that it's going to fall flat because the lead up to everything was so impactful and had such a grit and a, an eeriness and everything to it. Um, I think it's going to be really hard for them to top that, but you know, we'll see. What is it? It's like uh, a couple weeks away now, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate you getting a copy of the book. That's awesome. Yeah, so John says, I don't think it's the end of print. Ebooks will be very popular with text only heavy books, but the book is very helpful with image heavy books like comics. Yeah, you know, and the, there is the collectivity aspect. So as soon as things die down, the collectivity goes up. So I think that brings print back and things like that. I don't think print should it better never die. I mean, we need that tangible copy. You know, I don't I don't like knowing that well for for instance, I'm staring at a warning logo on the screen. It says, warning, your stream's bit rate. <laughs> you know, it's like all of a sudden the, the live stream might kick out. You know, the power might go out where I'm at or where you're at or whatever. So I don't like knowing that it's that volatile. And it's I can't imagine it's not ever going to be volatile. Uh, so there is that great thing about tangible media where it's not volatile like that. I mean, you want to read your comic, you can light a candle. But um and there's that collectivity and there's that it's more precious, you know, so I don't I don't like to ever say print is dead. But like I said, there is that idea that things are getting, uh, you know, that, that what we can do here has so much interactivity and and power and potential and you can reach the world uh, so quickly uh, and it eliminates the. The gatekeepers, as I always like to refer to them as, the people that hold you back from being a success because they say you have to go by their channels, their rules, their social agenda, blah, blah, blah. You know, so what's neat about this way of doing things is anybody can start a YouTube channel. Anybody can interact with a fan base. No gatekeeper. You know, so again, a lot of power there, a lot of uh, potential and, yeah, it's just just amazing really so as you know there is a lot of that uh stuff where people that run the show are you know corrupt and they they want to they want the people they want in uh in the limelight and they uh i don't know i don't want to again i sound like i'm getting too negative but hey i am drone thanos so he would probably agree snap the fingers and get rid of all the Gatekeep, well, he'd want to get rid of everybody, just it wouldn't really matter if they're good or evil, right? He just got rid of half of everyone. What a jerk move, man. Couldn't he just snap the, snapped his fingers and created more resources for everybody? What is What was the deal with that? Really thought he wasn't evil. Wouldn't he just do something really good? I think this jawline's got to come up. All right, forgive me, people. I'm all over the place. I probably should just focus on the art, right? So, any questions about the art? Let's look through these comments a little bit. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I appreciate you getting a copy as well. Yeah, thanks, sir. The support's awesome. Thank you. 
I won't probably see anything from it, but it's not that's not the point. I'm I'm uh well I did use my Amazon affiliate link, so I'll get a tiny little commission. But uh but what I'm doing is actually trying to make sure that anybody that does want to copy, they get get it before it's gone. Um if that ends up happening. Um hello from Argentina, nice to see you, Alfred. Okay, so let me know if uh, you guys got any questions about the art process. Um, Rick says, is he drawing from a reference photo? No, I'm not. And that's probably why you're going to see <clears throat> a few uh, inconsistencies. I guess I could just jump on and pull a reference photo. I'm always like weird about that because I don't know like if I'm supposed to use certain pictures and if I can on these, uh, these videos, you know, because I monetize this channel. I don't think it's a big deal, but... I'm not looking at any reference. I generally, you know what I could do? I could pull up a picture that I drew of Thanos, I guess, because I got the suit right in that one. And I can, Or I can try to just look at it on the other screen without recording it. Then I, it's going to be tricky because I have to keep this window open to see what you guys are writing. Let me try that. And let me know if you see any inconsistencies uh, with the way I'm drawing them. You can call me out on that. You're trying to draw with me but you're way behind Dante yeah just try to keep up it's not a big deal it's not a race we all try to draw at our own speed Thanos does have ears doesn't he yeah he's got ears but thanks for making me feel good because I feel like lately I feel like I've been drawn really slow it's like it's like bugging me I, I go through these uh, trials and tribulations of my art where I'm like feeling it and I'm feeling like I'm I'm getting better faster and I'm drawing really fast and well and then other times it's just like an uphill battle it's so weird really got to study more into that like why do we get inspired why do we get extremely motivated and then sometimes our imagination just kind of shut off maybe I need to play some more video games I don't know feed the brain box <clears throat> Captain America is going to die. <laughs> Man, that's not morbid. Thanks, Akash. I tell you what, I will shed a tear if they kill Cap. So just so you know, if you see somebody crying in the audience, it might be me. It's my hero. I got to admit, when they first casted him, and I kept thinking of him as um, Johnny Storm, right? Torch. Um, I was like, ah, oh, he's he's just not gonna do it real well. He's too like egotistical type, you know. He's not, but he, he was doing so well in that role that when he started playing Captain America and had this like nobility thing going on, I'm like, wow, that dude's a good actor because he is like Captain America now. He he nailed it. Like honestly, he's probably to me one of the ones that uh, fits that role the most. I just just nailed it. I'm also pretty impressed with the new kid playing Spider-Man, though. I didn't, and same thing, I didn't see him as being a good uh, Peter Parker type. And yeah, he's he's been fantastic. That's, he's probably my favorite Spidey now. I don't know. Tobey Maguire will always be my favorite Spidey. Just saying. Okay, so um, let me read through a couple of these. Do you ever use reference? Uh, so yeah, so David says, Robert, do you ever use reference for photos, for gesture drawing, portraits, stuff like that to practice? Um, do you have any websites you'd recommend? Um, yes, I do use uh, photo reference a lot for studying. I don't use it as much for any of my end work for my comics. Like you see this, I didn't look at anything for this, but it doesn't mean anything. If I struggle figuring out a face, I'm going to definitely pull reference, and but I'm always going to stylize it. I very rarely ever, ever trace. If you guys paid attention to the channel, I did a trace video on a 3D mannequin. People seem to really dislike that. <laughs> and uh, I don't do that hardly ever. I was just trying to make a point of that, hey, if you're really fighting to get these shapes in your, your mind's eye and your imagination, then it's okay to trace to study. It's okay to use reference daily. There's a lot of artists, very professional big name artists that use reference in every image. Uh, some get very good at just hiding it and stylizing it. 
So just be okay with that. It's not like reference is cheating. In fact, in the professional world, reference is oftentimes just the way it is. Uh, storyboards, they constantly were telling me like, just use reference, trace, do whatever you gotta do, get it done. We need that by this afternoon, four o'clock. It was more about the deadline, not about, you know, if you were a real, if what people consider a true artist where you just draw it from your imagination. I mean, that's great too. And you're going to do that sometimes. And other times you're going to study from reference. Oh, as far as good sites for reference, I use uh, Pixabay. Uh, I try to go with Creative Commons free just because you don't have the assortment. But then if you decide to use it somewhat commercially, it's not that big of a deal. So that's just me. Uh, just as far as using reference, I mean, you know, Google it. But uh, let's see, what I saw another one I wanted to read. Where is it? Oh, Rick says, can I send you a picture I made a front view of a comic book character? Okay, so here's the thing, people. If you want to send me your art, it's best to do that on my website. My web, my website, yeah, goodness. My website is ramstudiocomics.com. There's an email form there. Send it through there. Um, and maybe if not, you know, if you can't get through to there for some reason, you could message me through Instagram or Facebook. My Facebook is Ram Studio Comics on Facebook. So use those methods to send me art. I'll try to give you any fit, feedback I can. Keep in mind, though, I get a lot of submissions. So if I, if I miss it, you're just going to have to resubmit or catch me on a live stream and tell me I missed it. But it's it's kind of hard because there's a lot of people that want me to look at stuff these days. You got to keep in mind, too, that's what my online courses and classes are for. There's a direct link through there to send me work um, so I can gauge it based upon the lessons that I teach, which makes more sense because uh, if not, you know, if you just send me random artwork, it's a little bit harder for me to gauge what I should. But if you're doing it based on lessons, I've said like, hey, here's how you draw a head. Here's how you draw the body. Then it's easier for me to tell where you're at and what you're paying attention to. And ultimately help you so just be aware of that or you can even send me lessons out of the the learn to draw action heroes book that'd be kind of fun too you know like hey i completed a lesson out of that book check it out okay so uh yeah pinterest is fantastic for reference uh thanks aaron i've been i've been jumping into pinterest a lot more lately trying to create more boards and yeah pinterest is Flipping amazing. I, I like what you actually get things that are more related to what you're searching for. It's not so convoluted. Yeah, I like that one too, Michelle. Wayne Reynolds told her that uh, art takes as long as it takes. She says, I paint slowly too, but I was self conscious about it. And I was self conscious about it. Yeah, totally true. Like sometimes a big part of snapping out of some mental funk, I think anyways, as I, as I just said, I don't really always know what causes it, but sometimes I can get out of it by uh, changing the speed in which I create. And that means just slowing down. Like sometimes we just get really stressed with everything we got on our plate and you just gotta create a little bit slower and let your, I always say, let your imagination catch up with your idea. Like maybe your your visualization catch up with your imagination like that's tied together forgive me but but you know like being able to see this like i might get to a certain part of this and i'm just not seeing it so sometimes drawing faster doesn't help that it hurts that like that's why reference helps too i think because you're forced to slow down and start paying attention to other things um but me personally sometimes it's just a matter of well also taking a break, like getting up and walking away, coming back, you know, get, get yourself a cup of tea or something that relaxes you, then come back. And I feel like you shouldn't work through frustration. Like you shouldn't just, like, and that's what's tough too, because a comic artist or storyboards or whatever, deadlines are like always there. So you're constantly working through a state of frustration unless you're just really, you know, really good. You're really fast. You just don't to deal with that as much uh, at least with storyboards that's why i came back to drawing comics more is because i i felt like storyboards were always frustrating me and uh yeah i don't do them now really but um or i don't do them i haven't done a job in probably over a year and i'm and i'm happy with that because i was always having to draw faster and faster and and i just wasn't didn't feel natural like for me anyways 
So I just went to this creative stuff and uh, yeah, I love it. I love just being able to draw what pops into my mind. And today my mind is Thanos. The evil look. I didn't get the evil look right. Yeah, and the way they did that character's 3D, my goodness. Amazing. And the you know, the difference from when it was originally uh what was the first movie he was in? Very first the Adventures? I can't remember now. But he was like all blue and just didn't look nearly as dynamic. And then where he ended up in the last one was just flipping amazing. So yeah, big fan of that. Big fan of the way they were able to get the 3D so uh, so darn impressive over the years. I feel like the chin needs to be bigger. Anybody else seeing that? Let me read through a couple of these real quick. What affordable tablets do you suggest? I would say the Intuos uh, series. Well, I don't think they're called Intuos now. They're like the pros. They're a little bit cheaper. They're lap tablets, as I call them, or desktop tablets. So you got to look up at the screen. It takes some practice, but I recommend everybody start there before getting a full-on digital tablet. Uh, if you got the money, I I can't recommend the iPad Pro highly enough. It's just, but it's you know, it's obviously a lot more money. So it's not really an entry level. Um, how should you do the face if you pencil and paper in a full body? The face is sometimes not that big, so how should you detail it? Uh, you have to simplify, you have to use better use of shadows and less use of detail. So, the further away the character is, like since I'm up close and I'm working digitally, I can get in here and noodle around and do all these tiny little wrinkles and basically texturize. I won't keep all this, but I tend to. Almost like I'm painting, I tend to texturize a lot and then I'll soft erase and I'll just pick parts that I wanna keep in more of a comic style where I think more about line weight and shadow. But if I was to draw the same face way back here, I'm gonna have like a big shadow under the brow with just a little line break for the eye. I'm not gonna draw the bottom of the eye. I'm gonna basically simplify what's here and I'm gonna pick bigger shadows to and I'm to get the uh the gist of the information and I'm only going to get the major components. So a shadow under the nose will be really what details the nose. The mouth will be like a line break and then a shadow under that. So hopefully this makes sense. I'm kind of winging that there, but that's kind of how you do it. Like you as the further away you get, the more you're gonna do this. So you do the shadow under the jaw. You see how you convey kind of a similar face. And then if you got some detail you can add, you're going to go for the most definable things like his chin, his, you know, his grimace, his wrinkles on the forehead. But you're going to simplify a lot. Is that what you're asking? Why is Thanos so handsome? Oh, thank you, Akash. I, I really appreciate that. He's been using his daily moisturizer three times a day. Okay, so, but yeah, so that's that's it. I kind of like that phase. I think that came out pretty good. All right. So yeah, so once I get it to a point like this, I kind of just want to <laughs> work on the face, but face and the neck here. I don't really want to pull reference, but I, he's got all these details and intricacies for his design. I can't remember all of it. I will have to pull reference for that. So let me soft erase this part and show you how I would refine this. Yeah, I like that last comment too. Um, Lucas says, I use it in tools for painting, but I like drawing uh, on paper. I feel like I have more control this way. I've actually been drawn more traditionally, which you'll probably notice that if you've seen my past couple of videos. And uh, I really want to start doing more videos on that where we talk about combining the best of both worlds. So I really like what Lucas just said because sometimes you should just go to paper, just sketch on paper. You can even do a, um, 
a combination of these effects where you draw on paper and maybe just get your gesture, your basic concept, whatever, maybe like even the rough sketch you see here of Thanos, and then take that into the computer and use whatever tablet. And then tools, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can get great with any tablet, just so you know. You just got to figure it out. One of the people I like to reference uh, that, that does the type of method we're talking about where they sketch on paper, then they bring it in and they refine it with their Intuos is a very amazing artist, uh, Patrick Brown. That dude does fantastic, some of the best comic work out there, I think, and you know, very imaginative, uh, neat concepts. And that's how he works. So um, he even has a uh, class on Skillshare where he shows kind of that process. So just keep that in mind that basically you can use different uh, variables from each method. There, it's not like one just takes over and it's just that. You don't have to think of it that way. It's not one or the other. It's it's combining whatever works. Um, I mean, think of some of the best art you've ever seen. It's usually mixed media. I mean, not always, but it usually is. And it's because they, they get so good that they say, oh, I'm going to use watercolor for this. I'm going to mix in some paint with this and I'm going to retouch it in Photoshop for this part. I mean, it's this is kind of this combination of all the different tools and methods and you get the best end result. So, you know, try whatever you can. I don't ever think, you know, like when I promote digital, that I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, traditional is a thing of the past. I, you got to have traditional art. It's you got to keep that around, especially for the collectivity and the the uh, originals. You know, I'm getting ready to do some comic shows. Well, I'm doing more traditional art right now because I want to take those to the shows. Yeah, Michelle says I got a 13 inch HD uh, Cintiq refurbished for 600 bucks. That's a really good deal. So you can look into refurbished uh, units. A lot of times those are good deals. You can insure them if you need to. I think I, I like that, or I appreciate that comment, Michael, about why aren't you attached to a major book? Have you ever submitted to Marvel or DC? You know, every time I, I think about that and I start reading up on it and trying to find ways to do that, it's, I always come to the conclusion that they say, if you're good enough, we'll find you. So I always just focus on creating content on YouTube because YouTube has exposed me to such a big market of, uh, or I don't know if that's the right word, not a big market of people, a big uh you know a big audience of of um potential people to meet and interact with like we're doing here that i just kind of figured that that would be my best way to get my work out there and hopefully um get the right eyes on it but it hasn't really happened so i just keep drawing and i just keep going and i uh, having fun with it but uh yeah i don't know i don't know what i should actually do there but um and I and I go to more comic conventions, so I imagine I'll I'll eventually bump into people the right way there. I just have to make better and better art where it becomes more apparent that I could do something like that. But I am I am trying to focus more on some sequential storytelling because I've gotten such in the habit of just drawing fan art that I really believe you can't really make it that way. Like you can't just sit around and draw pinups like we're doing here or you know fan art shots. I love doing that. But they they want to see your ability to tell a really dynamic story. Uh, so I've got to get back on that. And that's why I draw my Blackstone comic. Uh, it gives me great practice for that. But even that, I've been slouching a bit. So i got to jump back over to that. Um, yeah, but I really just think that I need to do more sequential storytelling. And I need to be more active in the comic conventions. So I appreciate you thinking I'm ready, though. That's fantastic. Alright, let's try to detail this face. Try not to zoom in too much since that can be a bit of a hindrance. <laughs> yeah, Kim Kim Jung to do a book. That that book would come out on time every time. It was amazing. Yeah, I try to practice figure drawing every day, uh J Arts. Um like yesterday's video was actually just uh like three female superhero poses. Super heroin poses, I guess you're supposed to say. Um, and uh, that was just my warm-up poses for yesterday. So normally I try to do, I'll either do like 10 uh, rough 
gestural, more gestural poses, or I will uh, do like like I did yesterday, where it was three more refined. So I'll I'll lay in some of the anatomy and some of the kind of you know feeling and look of the character, the uh, little bit of the narrative of what I'm thinking with that character. So, but I, I think sometimes you really should just stick to the gestural. I think most of the time you should because you learn so much more by doing 10, 20 poses of of quick representations and gestures of the body than you do by trying to constantly refine every sketch. Like it's just, and I guess unless you're studying anatomy more than you're studying uh, or detailed anatomy versus just gestural parts of the body, the way the body moves. And But uh, I think for me right now, the best thing is to study more uh, gesture. And I want to get more expressive characters. Uh, lately, I've been drawing a lot of facial expressions. Uh, they're, and they're actually really hard for me, which is crazy. I just I didn't realize that until, you know, until I study something. I don't realize how difficult it is for me to get just the right expression I'm looking for. You know, it's easy to do angry people all the time. Uh, but obviously, you're going to have a very limited range in your storytelling. Uh, and somebody that I've been paying attention to a lot, been reading the Invincible comic, and I really love uh, Ryan Otley's ability to uh, draw express or his, you know, when he worked on that book anyways, all the expressions that he conveyed, overly animated and, and very like fun and energetic. And I just think that that's, there's so much to learn there. So I've been studying that, plus just enjoying the, the writing from uh, Robert Kirkman, obviously, just a fantastic writer. And I didn't think I would enjoy that book because it's like kind of gory and not really my thing in that sense. But it's uh, it's really fun. It's it's really interesting and uh, got a lot of dynamics to it. But like I said, I'm really enjoying studying the way that he lays out his scenes and his his uh, expressive characters and uh, you know everything flying out at camera. That's always kind of cool. I like that kind of drawing. But yeah, so. Yeah, thanks again, Michael. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think I, I got some chinks in my armor. I appreciate you thinking I'm ready, but, you know, I, I think that a lot of times these people that are making the decisions, the editors and that for Marvel, DC, they really, they can really spot the flaws. It's just like when you look back at your old work and you're like, man, I, I felt like I was just kicking butt back in the 90s or whenever, I'm kind of old. So you're like, you know, back then I was, you know, 10 years ago, I was amazing. And then you look back 10 years and you go, wow, what was I thinking? You know, like I could not draw faces. I could not draw bodies or whatever it is. So, you know, I think that it's hard because these big wigs, these editors and chiefs and things, and they just, they look at stuff and they're immediately like, oh, guy, you know, he's very one dimensional in this aspect. He doesn't use the shadows, right? Whatever. So there's a big, there's a big bar to get over, you know? And William says, do you have any tips for backgrounds and hero portraits? Um, yeah, I don't know. Could you reword that? That's a tough one for me to answer. I mean, like just backgrounds and like if I was to put a background at this, like what would be a tip for that? I don't know what you mean there. Like one of the main things for backgrounds is just you definitely want to, me personally, I definitely pull from reference when I want to learn more about backgrounds because if not, I will fall prey to this like uh, repetitive behavior of backgrounds. So for instance, my repetitive behavior is plain buildings, uh, brick walls, you know, busted up kind of anarchy, um, apocalyptic background, um, spiky mountains. Like <laughs> these are just things that when I don't know what to draw for a background, that's what happens. You know, so what ha for me, what I need to do to improve my ability to to tell a story and to, uh, you know, do something more interesting, I have to look at reference and I have to interpret that reference into a comic style. So uh, that's all I do. And, and kind of like how I showed earlier in this video how to simplify that face, that applies to everything. That applies to buildings, to cars. If you can't draw a car really well, 
don't sit there and fight it. Don't sit there and try to, you know, spend all day drawing a car and then think that, well, now I've mastered cars and next time it'll be way easier. That kind of helps a little bit, but it's not going to totally solve the issue. You're, I think in my opinion, you're better off drawing a bunch of cars throughout your storytelling in a simplistic manner. And then you'll eventually start, things will eventually start to click. It's like, to me, it's like the sheer amount of drawing makes things easier over time. You know, telling the story and getting through each panel, each page without fighting this uphill battle of something you just don't understand yet. Um, it's, it's hard to explain. I just feel like, for instance, I look at people that draw a monthly title and their book in the beginning might be kind of basic, right? Kind of weak in a sense. Uh, no offense to Ryan Otley, amazing, amazing artist. But the first few books I thought were like, wow, this is kind of lacking in some areas. But then by the end of that series, he was flipping amazing. But you got to think, that's a hundred and something books, a monthly title. I mean, he took some gaps with other artists filling in, things like that, but not much. He did most all of that from what I can tell. And in the beginning, it was pencil and inking too. Um, so what I'm saying is that sheer amount of process and, and progress through that work is so important. And most people won't do that unless they're committed to a monthly title and to, to committed to a schedule. They have to kind of treat your art that way. I think if you ever really want to play in those big leagues and you got to draw every day, we all know that, uh, but you've got to fight the, the problem of just repetitive behavior. And if you can't draw something really well, at least just draw it, get through it, stylize it, simplify it, and move on. I think anyways. And, and every now and then, take your time to do some realistic studies and really jump into the details of it and see you know, why you're not getting it. So, you, know, you always wanna make time for studies. I think it was Arthur Adams that said something like in the beginning, you want to study half of the day, okay? And then as you get more and more to a level of professionalism or being a professional, then you can, you can just do, you can just create the art and you don't have to study nearly as much. And I think he still said that you should study in like, tw you know, go, go down to like 20% a day or something. But he said in the beginning when you're trying to get better, half of your day should be studying. I mean, just think about that. Like if you just, if you're not getting there, you're not getting the recognition you deserve or that you think you deserve, uh, then you should be studying more. And uh, that way when you complete your finished art, it's it's amazing. It, it shows all this, you know, this growth. Every uh, completed piece that you do has like a sign that you've learned more. That's, that's going to really make people pay attention to your work. It's not always the easiest thing to do. And, and also, don't hold yourself to accountable. Don't think that every thing that you do has to be better than the previous thing. I think that's a, that's a negative association to your work. Oh, ZHC, good to have you here. That's awesome. I haven't been able to do, or I haven't been able to take Thanos seriously since the Ant-Man Mimi. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm sure you already know because he's he's got a really big channel, but he's uh he does some amazing comic art as well. So if you haven't looked at his channel, check out ZHC. And then there's a bunch of other people high fiving. Yeah, good job. Way to support people. And they're like, where's my where's my request? I need it now. All right, and I'm gonna keep doodling on this. I don't feel like the th the chin's looking weird. It's already a weird chin, but I feel like I maybe over over uh, texturized it or something. So that's an error. I'll probably soft erase and again simplify. Let's check it from a distance. That looks a little a little wonky too, but. All right, and I got to remember how the armor goes. And I may have to pull reference for this. Let 
And again, you guys are welcome to check me and say, hey, this is wrong. That shouldn't be like that, dude. I'll try to fix it. I'm trying to get better about taking my constructive criticism. It's not easy, to be honest. Too many lines in the chin. I knew it. I flippin' knew it. Try that again. With less lines on the chinny chin chin. Just kind of space those out. Maybe that'll make it read better. Yeah, I really want to try to uh, simplify areas of my work more and more. It's kind of it's kind of a mix because I really love texturing and uh, rendering cross-hatching, things like that. But then I know that's usually where I do, uh, end up spending a tremendous amount of time. And then if I'm on a book title, if ever, I think that's where I would really fall behind. I would definitely have to have an anchor if I did more of that rendering. And I think that's why a lot of the books that are popular these days seem to have less of that. Doesn't it seem like everybody's doing a lot more of a, a lighter, kind of airy, bit of work these days like more Disney-esque and just doesn't seem like you know like the part that got me into comics was the 90s stuff and it's all like heavy rendering and shading and detailing and it seems like there's a lot less of that now <laughs> looks like Thanos had a badass goatee nice yeah I made him I made them uh, thicker because uh, I feel like if I don't, I always make his head too big to his body. And he's just this massive character. So I felt like I need to really wide out his, widen out his shoulders. Um, I don't know. Maybe I went a little too much with it. But I, I feel like it looks better on this character. Like I think in the, in the movie, he's got a little bit bigger head comparison to what you see in comics. In comics, he's... Usually got this little head and this big body, but again, this varies wildly based upon artist to artist. You know, different renditions are going to vary greatly. All right, so move the anatomy in here. Yeah, let me do this. Give me one sec, you guys, while I sip my coffee and I pull a reference shot. I'm actually just gonna pull it on a different device here real quick. I got devices all over the place. I'm like the Tony Stark of digital art. Just kidding. I wish. Okay, so Thanos. Oh, yeah, I'm way off on the neck piece. Goodness. You guys weren't even checking me on this. I appreciate that, I guess. Hi from India. Nice to have you. All right, I'm not reading that last comment. That's. Luckily, I have a bit of a filter when I talk or when I read. I don't know. What do you guys think? Filter or no filter? What do, what do you like on your YouTube channels? I like to keep it a little PG-13 around here, but that's just me. It was more like this. Let me get some of the, the neck anatomy more visible. And I was kind of over-rendering it anyways, right? This is all, I guess if we're going with the movie version, you're going to get less all this neck wrinklage. Never be afraid to use reference. No, you're, you're right, JR. It's Uh, 
that? Got these. This thing has so much detail. You know what? And you can't even see his chest in this one. So crazy. I forgot about that. Like all just like metal plating over that area. Big U shape right here. It's wearing a cutoff. It's just so funny when you think about it. Like even Thanos likes to show off the guns. Let's come back in here. It's got this like pyramid shape. I realize that the um his uh, outfit looks very like Egyptian, Egyptian uh, pharaoh esque kind of thing going on. I guess makes makes good sense. Definitely a tie into that with like the whole alien vibe. And anybody remember Stargate? God, that movie was awesome. Okay, so will you add his helmet from other MCU movies? Uh, no, no helmet version. Yeah, because generally if I'm going to add the helmet, I'm going to start really early on in the sketch with that. Uh, not draw out his face. But I, I do like, I tell you the truth, when I draw Thanos more in the comic style, I always put the helmet on him. You know, he's got that centerpiece that goes like this, and I can't remember it right now without looking at uh, at an image. But I used to draw it from memory like that because I always, you know, for the comic version, I always drew him like that. That's kind of really my favorite depiction of him, but since the, since the movie, it's like I draw more like this for everybody. Uh, do you have any tips on creating a portfolio for comics, like creating full pages or things like that? Yeah, so that's a good question, actually, by uh, Mazink. I don't know how to say that. Sorry. Um, so anyways, yeah, great question because, I, you know, I've been wanting to address this more and even thinking about doing a full-on video for this. Um, cause people will often ask me to look at their work and then I'll go back and try to maybe look at their portfolio page, things like that. First off, I recommend that you got a few portfolio pages, uh, at least a DeviantArt page. You know, it's like everything's online. You probably should have a DeviantArt and or an art station page. <clears throat> and also you should be careful about putting a bunch of sketches in there. Now, this is going to seem strange because if you go to mine, you're going to see a lot of sketches. You're going to see a lot of rough art. Now, the reason being is because since I do have all these classes and I teach different, you know, things on YouTube, I share a lot more rough stuff because of those less, they, they kind of coincide with those lessons. But if you're not trying to teach and help educate people and, and make a bunch of how to stuff, then really what your portfolio should consist of is your best work. For instance, if you go to show an editor your work for talking comics, it's kind of common knowledge that you show your best pieces, you know, 10 to 15 of your best pages. And if you want to be a comic artist, you're going to tell sequential storytelling. You're not going to show pinups. You're definitely not going to show half completed pieces and then try to explain your way through the work. Uh, the editor is going to shut off. They're going to go, he's not ready, he or her. So just be aware of that. You got to think about your portfolio as uh, you know, one, what are you trying to achieve by it? Uh, two, you got to look at it like somebody that doesn't know you, doesn't maybe like you yet. <laughs> Sounds harsh, but it's reality. And what are they going to think when they see your work? So show your, your best work. Show the progression that you, you have. If you're going to show more than, say, 15 pieces, then obviously show your progression and don't include a bunch of half finished artwork. Don't include uh, things that you're not actually trying to be. Uh, so for instance, if you're trying to be a um, storyboard artist, then you're gonna have a bunch of storyboard panels, obviously, and full sequential scenes of that. And maybe some comic art, cause that kind of coincides pretty well, I think, personally. But maybe not as much um, digital painting, unless you're gonna do the painted boards. Same thing with comics. If you're going for comics, Show comic work, maybe not as much of your portraiture work, uh, because a lot of times people that are looking at that are, are going to think, okay, what are they? What are they really after? You know, are they? Do they want to be this or do they want to be that? Uh, maybe they're confused. Maybe 
they're thinking, well, this person doesn't really want to work in comics. They look like they might be more interested in working in cartooning or whatever. So I would make sure it kind of reflects what you want to be. Um, and past that, you know, don't underestimate the things that really uh, say a lot to viewers, like composition, uh, you know, drawing scenes that, that uh, have a bunch going on, you know, like, uh, like stuff with, for instance, you see what I'm doing here? I'm drawing a character against a blank white canvas. If I expected this to be viewed by uh, somebody that was going to critique my work or an editor or something like that, I would make sure there's a background in here. So that's the other thing. Just make sure that you draw full scenes and include, don't draw, just, don't just draw a bunch of characters on a blank white canvas. Um, and I see that a lot and I do that sometimes when I'm messing around. Um, but I need to be accountable for that. And, uh, I'm trying to look at reference here. So the gems on the back of the hand. I actually hate drawing this glove. It's got this like raised area right here. The old one from the comics was much easier to draw. So yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. I, I need to really delve into that further myself, but I need to, and here's the other thing. One last thing about the portfolio thing go back and edit your portfolio that's why i said 10 to 15 pieces look at those ones and if they're bad and they're old and you've grown a lot as an artist it hurts but show it to the back door ditch it um make sure that you have your strengths in your portfolio and if it's an older piece where you got like some wonky legs and your character doesn't look right ditch it move on so all right i'll leave that one alone yeah, constructive criticism stings sometimes, but it's far more constructive than somebody liking your stuff all the time. Yeah, very true, Michelle. Like, uh, no, no truer words were said because what happens is all these likes from social media and, uh, you know, your, your friends and your family and your buds and people that are just online for the sake of making other people feel better, which is, seems nice, right? It's like all, you know, rainbows and unicorns. It's fantastic. But... The bad thing is it totally gives you a false sense of confidence. And when you do meet that, that editor, that real deal editor or whoever, you know, the person that's going to give you your, your job or whatever, um, or your agent that's working with a client, they got to come back and relay this negative uh, information about what you're not drawing right. Those harsh realities are going to smack you in the face. And it's better to take the constructive criticism now learn and grow from it and uh, and develop that thick skin as, as an artist you need a thick skin um, unless you're just the type where you sit around creating your own visions and people pay for them and, and you're fine and you can make a living that way that's great but a lot of times when you're doing illustrative work it's other people's ideas that you have to bring to life so uh, yeah they're, they're not gonna love every single thing you do unfortunately and especially if you're working in the very competitive markets, they're going to be very picky. And, and here's the other thing. Generally, the more they pay, the pickier they get. It just seems to coincide. So not always, but it's, it's generally the way it works. So, yeah, take the uh, harsh criticism now. Own up to it. Try to become better. And uh, it'll, it'll be better dealing with it now than when you're in the middle of a, a project. And the uh, the pressure's on because there's associated deadlines and you know and you might have to work for keeping five different people happy. That that was always the the tough one for me in storyboards. I didn't know who my boss was, if any. Um, you, know, you always think you don't have a boss when you work and things like that, and it actually turns around you have multiple bosses. <laughs> Pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, then all of a sudden somebody you weren't even dealing with ch chimes in and says, well, you know, the, the face, something's wrong with the face. All right, cool. What is it? I don't know. Something's wrong with your face. Not your face, the face. Not your face. I'm like channeling that, uh, that part in Step Brothers where the guy's like, something about your face. I just, I don't like it. I'll try to fix it. No, you can't fix it. It's your face, but... All right, anyways, 
All right, so I think how long have we been on this thing? Probably shouldn't have. Hmm. Probably should have timed it. How long have we been doing this? Anybody? Stay on here. Don't know. I usually try to do these for an hour, but they didn't time it. Let's see if it shows me on the stream here. I guess it does. I think we started at about 9.30. Man, early for me, or 9.30 where I'm at, sorry. You guys could be halfway on the other side of the globe. I don't know how to do a, a gem here. Bunch of little lines. And when in doubt, scribble. Because scribbles will eventually show you the way. That's what I do anyways. All right, and yeah, you really can't see the top of his chest, but I'm gonna leave it. I, I think it looks cooler when you can see the, the musculature through the uh, through the armor, but it's not realistic. I get it, but yeah, I don't know. You guys can tell me what you think. And I think I'm gonna push this line back. I feel like his head needs to be a little wider. Maybe the ear is just too close the back of the head maybe this was throwing me off just over an hour cool thanks uh thank you ben did you like the captain marvel movie i'm sure i will like it i'm not i'm not really that critical of any of the marvel movies even the dc i know a lot of people down them but i i like them i just but i'll, I'll be honest i wait till everything comes to video except for i will go to see endgame but everything else i pretty much wait for it to come to video it, it happens so fast now that I really don't feel like I'm waiting that long. And I'm so behind on watching everything else that just do it like that. Um, but I will go, they actually just put a new, um, one of them new fancy theaters by my, my place. So I will go to see Endgame. Um, but other than that, you know, I'll just, I'll just wait for it to come out on uh, Amazon or whatever, pick it up there. I like watching it from the comfort of my own home on my, my big screen and, family and that's just kind of how i do it but you know you guys are welcome without spoilers of course to, to tell me what you thought of it i uh you know I, it's tough too because then i get to see all the reviews and i gotta avoid the spoilers obviously but people start saying like just they're they're so like negative about the character and so then it makes me worry a little bit more provided like if i just went and saw it i wouldn't care about any of that so that kind of, that's probably the worst part about waiting. But I imagine I'll like it because Marvel just does a crazy great job with uh, their movies. I mean, I can't think of any of them I disliked. And I can't, you know, I would say the, the, um, Spider-Man's with uh, Andrew Garfield, or however you say his name, Garfield, or Punk Garfield, right? But uh, I didn't really care for those. I mean, I st still watched them. I, I tried to get through them. Actually, that that's probably the only ones I didn't finish, which is weird because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. But I just, something about the way they were telling the story just didn't click for me. Um, now, the new Spider-Man's fantastic. I can't wait to see that next one. The trailers look amazing for it. I actually got to finish one of my fan art pieces for that. And uh, yeah, I'm totally stoked for that one. I can't believe I just said totally stoked, but yeah, anyways, you guys are probably, dude, nobody says that anymore. Nobody ever did say that. What's going on? All right, I think that's getting closer. Maybe work on the gauntlet a little bit. You guys got any suggestions here? Usually you guys are telling me what to draw and what to do, and you guys are just kind of let me do my thing this time. It's awesome. All right, so Michael says, I find general criticism not very useful. I posted a terrible drawing to HTDC, which is how to draw comics on Facebook. 
Highly recommend it if you guys are trying to get better at your comic art. Uh, Clayton Barton runs that, and it's uh, along with Ed um, Oyuk, I think, and, and um, Rick Bulo, and they do a fantastic job over there, so check them out. <clears throat> but that being said, you know, he's saying I got a lot of bunch of beginner tips. Um, here's what's going to happen with, with criticism from just anybody, okay? If they don't know what to say, they're going to they're gonna say beginner tips. Why? Because it affects everything else. But it does make sense. Like, for instance, if you can't draw something dimensionally, here's something I've been doing lately. I've been struggling to get more dimensional feeling to some of this stuff. Even the hand looks weird, whatever. I'm going to go right back to drawing stuff like this. And you're, you're going to think, wow, this is way beginner. Why would you say this? And I'm gonna, I'll explain it here in a second. I'm going to go back to drawing like this. It's so silly, but so overlooked and how important this can be. Drawing through it, drawing some that are solid, shading it, drawing some very primitive shapes. It's okay to do that. And a lot of times people are going to tell you the basics because they don't know what to really, they don't know what pearl of advice to really catapult you, but they know that the basics help everybody. And they do. Even, even like, I'm not saying I'm some great artist, but you know, people think my art's somewhat advanced sometimes. I, I guess I don't think that about my art. I think that I have a lot to learn and I go back to the basics all the time. I'm getting ready to do a bunch of hand studies because my hands are just feeling a bit more boring than they should. And they're very easy to, again, fall into the habit of drawing the same boring hands and not making them better. So I have to revisit that in my work. So sometimes who you ask for the advice is just as important as, as asking for the constructive criticism, but it's not always gonna come from the people you want it to because professionals are busy and some of them don't like to be mean. Uh, so, and they feel like it's not their job to, to tell you, like you just have to go search out books and things like that to get better. So, I guess the main thing is this, when you're lucky enough to get advice from the right person, really be ready to accept it. Asking for advice is uh, constructive criticism is insanely important. So I'm proud of you for taking that step. But the other thing is you got to remember if you ask a, a big um, a forum like that or a group, you might not get the people you're looking for or they might revert to basics because they don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to do to offer you the best bit of advice. Uh, and, and honestly, don't shrug off the basics either. The main things are this. If you want to get better, it's almost always the same things, really. It's like draw more figure drawing, draw more anatomy studies, um, draw basic primitive shapes, but turn them. You know, like I saw this one with this guy on YouTube. I uh, can't remember who it was, but he was drawing... Uh, ellipses he's going like this he's going like this he's connecting them he's drawing one in the middle and he was turning these he was making cylinders he did them over and over and over again now this guy was a, a master artist you could tell just even the way he was constructing them but he was you could tell he was very patient and drawing with elegance and just saying you know what i need to I need to turn these forms in my mind every conceivable way. And through that, I'm going to get better at, at uh, not just drawing ovals, cylinders, ellipses, whatever, but uh, you're, you're painting a picture for your mind. You're, you're strengthening your visualization process. Um, so it, it kind of just made me think how much work people really put into being good artists. Like they don't just draw their favorite characters all the time draw all this other stuff so that when they go to draw their favorite characters it translates it comes out with more confidence so yeah just don't be afraid to go back to basics anatomy draw buildings learn perspective um uh, if you struggle to make a character look dimensional try drawing the perspective first you know a box or whatever you need for perspective and then draw your character inside there. Generally, it starts to read better because you have this container of information to understand where this character should go. Now, if I tried to draw the same character this quickly on 
the blank white canvas, it's going to be worse. I'm not saying this is great, but I'm saying it's going to be worse because I don't have this relationship to guide me. So I'll practice drawing some perspective and then come back and redraw your characters. And draw a gesture really fast. Like this even looks stiff, but um, start to do, do uh, gesture studies where you just look at the flow of the body. Nothing else. Just like where is the spine? Where is the energy in the pose? And, and then do 20 quick sketches, 50 quick sketches of just that. Once you start looking at it like that, like you're going to put in this real work and effort getting better just starts to make sense because you you know you're doing the exercises just like a person that's like all right i want to be in shape and one person does 10 push-ups a day and the other one does 100 and then the person doing 100 tries to get to 150 you know they're like they're they're so committed to the growth that all of a sudden the the amount of push-ups just becomes easier and they go well, i'm going to do more and more and that's, that's how it works in art, too, I think. You just have to really be committed. I need to redraw this. It's so bad. All right, where did my reference go here? I feel like this needs to be higher. There needs to be a curve here. I'm going to draw that curve line first. Draw through this because I keep making it look flat. Yeah, they put a lot of detail on this glove. It's crazy. I always cringe when I start having to draw this thing. And this tool would be up higher. Be over more. I do a lot of like sketch through lines, especially with hands. And I'm trying to find if all this is aligning the right way. Obviously, I got to move some things around here. Making like some power emanating off it or something. Maybe some Kirby crackle. If I got my, I don't know if I have that brush with me on this software, let's check. Pretty proud of my Kirby crackle brush that I made. Yeah, right here, let me see if that looks okay with this. Oh, these need to be bigger. All right, and then a too messy. Try that one more time. I think it needs to be a little smaller. Kind of weird because I don't want it to go all the way around like this, but I try something here. So I can also come back with a translucent brush. There's negative versions in there. And then there's a part two of it. These little things kind of bouncing off. So this is cheating at its best, folks. Well, people are probably like, oh man, I can't believe it. Why would you do that? But hey, Kirby Crackle takes forever and I was able to make a brush and save some time. So I, I did it, I did it, I'm sorry. And then you can change the particle size over here and get some bigger ones. But this is a sketch. I don't even know if I'll leave that. I just wanted to try it. This is one of the things I always did when I uh, drew Thanos on paper and inked it was this Kirby Crackle. I probably have a few more of the negative shapes of the first one, like through here, maybe. Oh, much. Yeah, it's weird. You got to get just this right random behavior of it for it to look right. 
yeah, I don't know, something like that. But I'll take that out of there for now. Continue sketching. I want to try it. I think that sometimes those brushes, they they can feel like you're cheating, but you know, if you got a deadline, you got to get something done, and it's a repetitive thing, you know, whether it be a design or texture or whatever, it just makes sense to kind of utilize that get your work done faster. All right, let's see if there's any. Hey, what's up, Sam? Any good comments here? Yeah, thanks, Dizzy B. I like that one. It's not cheating. I use the end of a paintbrush and mask fluid on traditional media, and it's fairly quick. Yeah, you just have to take whatever technique and method you can come up with. Uh, at the end of the day, it's you know it's your vision that makes it all come together. So if you got, you know, if you, knowing when to apply these effects is more important than kind of you know like what the actual method is. Like the the trick is the, you know, doing it in a way where it's it's effective and saves you time. But knowing where to use it is is. The most important thing just because you know a cool technique it doesn't work everywhere you got to know when to choose your battles and where to place it to make it effective and i think let's just want to ink this but i don't i don't want this to run too awfully long i'm gonna end up having to break out of here in a bit is there any uh questions you guys have for what you see here anything you'd like me to explain i'll probably finish this and post it um you know like on the dvnr my facebook instagram whatever so you guys can check out the uh the finished version if you like Uh, thanks, Akash. I really appreciate that. Um, was it hard going from pen and paper to drawing a drawing tablet? Uh, it was when I first was trying to work with the Intuos 4 that I started with. Uh, I actually love using that tablet now, but at the time, it was very hard for me to get the right lines that I wanted. Um, so that that does take time to transition. Uh, once you go to something like a Cintiq or an iPad Pro, no, the learning curve is very, very short or quick or whatever the right word for that is. It, it's just insanely easy because it's very much like drawing traditionally. So you don't have to do a whole lot. You have to learn the software and how that functions, but you don't have to um, reinvent the wheel with those. So um but you know, there's strengths to the regular and tools type tablets, you know, the lap tablets or whatever. Uh, one of the great things is your hands not in the way. So for some reason for me, I always notice better symmetry with that tablet. It's a little harder to get everything that I want in place and maybe a tiny bit slower. Um, but like I said, symmetry seems to be better. Uh, it's better on your back. Cause you're like with those you can like sit and lean back you're not hunched over the drawing surface if you know if that's how you draw i guess but um yeah so those those in a lot of ways have some superior aspects i actually like painting better with those and then i like uh sculpting better with those but for drawing i still gravitate towards the cintiq and honestly my favorite drawing device is my ipad pro i get my i don't know why but i get my best drawings on the iPad Pro and I think it's because I can draw anywhere in the house. I can sit on my couch, I can go sit on the deck, uh, you know, and, and get some nature and, and, you know, it's like I'm not compelled or forced to draw in just my studio setting in one spot and I think that lends to uh, creativity and not getting so flustered 
um, with a piece, keeping kind of a an energy to the the work. Anyways, that's how I kind of feel about it. And you know, being able to travel with the art is is awesome. So that's that's actually my favorite drawing device and setup right now is that. So I feel guilty saying that as I'm sitting here using Clip Studio Paint on my desktop, but it's just the way it is. If I actually had to pick just one device, it would be the, uh, the iPad Pro. I just wish the screen was bigger. I was actually excited when they said they were coming out with another one. I'm like, oh, they're going to make the screen bigger. Sweet. And they didn't. They actually made it a touch smaller, I think. Oh, I just wish they'd come out with a little bit bigger version of that tablet and uh, be on. Fantastic. <laughs> That's the second person that says the handsome Thanos. Nice, thanks people. I it's more of a self portrait? No, I'm just kidding. My chin is way more wrinkly than that. And I have hair. <laughs> For now. I have a glorious head of hair. It's glorious. All right, and he's got a bunch of these like little intricate designs and I'm just going to sketch these in so I don't feel like I've cheated as much and but I obviously got to go back and refine all this. This is just very loosely thrown in there at this point. And I also didn't realize that this part looks totally different than the way I drew it. Forgive me, folks. I plethora of mistakes. But as they say, fail faster, learn more. All right, so I'm gonna bring this one to a close. Um, like I said, I'll finish this off the stream and uh, share it. I'm sorry I'm not as fast as like, you know, Jim Lee or somebody could do these all in one sitting uh, with an audience. I, I'll get there someday, I hope. But I think we got a lot accomplished. I feel pretty good about it. I'd like to do a digital high five to everybody for being here. Maybe even a hug. I don't know if you're a hugger or not. I'm a hugger. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for supporting the channel here and tuning in and watching this and giving me all the great comments and feedback. So I know, uh, you know, what you guys are digging and what you're not. That's fantastic. Uh, answer a couple more of these. So should I do portrait drawings? Yes, you should definitely do portrait drawings. Uh, is this Photoshop? No, this is Clip Studio Paint. It's very similar to Photoshop, but it's more powerful in the way that it has perspective tools and you can actually draw a whole comic book with word balloons inside this one program. So I highly recommend Clip Studio Paint for comic artists. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Gaming Pooh <laughs> says, I wasn't notified that you were streaming. I don't know what the, I think you got to turn on notifications, that little bell or something. I'm not sure. They keep changing things around here. Bob Ross is in the house. Thanks, Bob Ross. You're, you're like my hero. I'm glad you could stop in um let's see what else can you draw thor yeah maybe we can schedule that for next time i'm gonna try to get back on doing more live streams i know i always say that but these are to me just very cool powerful i love the back and forth the immediacy of it uh that's even a word it's just very neat that there's this direct uh link that we can do and talk about the work and you guys can suggest things so I do need to do more of these like once a week or something. So I'll try to start scheduling that uh, in the future. All right. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to cut out of here. I hope you guys like the work. Um, be sure to comment on the video after it goes live. All these videos go live after the fact. Comment on them. Let people know what you think. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Cause then I go into the next one with an idea and not just a blank white canvas saying, Hey, let's draw something today, folks. That's fun too. But you know, sometimes it's good to have a little bit of structure. So thanks very much for tuning in today, everybody. I really enjoyed it and uh, more content is on the way. So as always keep drawing, keep having fun and I will talk to you soon.
Oh, I got to end the stream. Bye, everybody. Bye.